What's going on people? This is Jagos and this is going to be a little bit about the economic terms. Now, to be very honest, I've been slacking on the reports that I've been meaning to do. I just haven't really had the time to sit here and fix on them. That's why I kind of fixated on a few topics. And honestly, I'm probably going to be taking a little bit longer time to get those topics together and squared away instead of getting into just like the minutiae of a certain number of things. Um, one of the things that I was going to be talking about tonight is actually going to be some economic terms. And this came up recently as I was looking into some of the um, other people, how they talk about certain things and how it comes up about when people talk about any type of economics about saturation and everything like that so what i'm using as the term is saturation now this has a certain kind of connotation when people talk about saturating the market they kind of flood it with all of these games that are like similar products but also tend to go into various different say little changes here and there like for example you can have a lot of first person shooters that pretty much saturate the market like when people talk about doom castle of wolfenstein they're talking about quake they're talking about half-life 3 um if all of these were to come out at the exact same time with similar mechanics then that is saturating the market however when you look at what is saturating the market these um, games can actually be coming out in different time frames maybe one or two years apart and have very similar mechanics but they're all considered first person shooters and that can kind of change how we look into it now I do want to sit here and explain that saturating the market is one way of looking at it but I believe and this is just me that it is a, an effect not necessarily a cause it's not a cause for why there are a lot of first person shooters out at the exact same time same likewise if we look at mega man flooding the market so to speak that's all of these um similar platforming games coming out at the same time now i do want to sit here and you know as i say with any type of Phoenix Wright thing you want to look at it from a different angle and that's why I usually sit here and try to sit here and explain let's think about it from a different angle what exactly is going on now if anybody has looked at my Capcom videos I sit here and I focus on the top guys who's at the top what do they want what do they plan because usually whatever they plan on that is going to be the current stratagem for maybe one, two, or three years. Like um, Kenzo Sujimoto, he just bought a new studio and all this other good stuff. So that way he can sit here and have his lifestyle. But whatever he decides, whatever games that he decides on, that's what everyone is going to make. Now, what do we call this? Because he doesn't know what the future lies. He doesn't know exactly what all of his workers are going to do. He only has control mainly of what the um, corporate officers are going to say. And there is a word for that that is not saturating the market. Now, when you saturate the market, it's already been done. That's the thing. That's the key issue there. When you're already finished with all of the goods, who made that decision? To me, if you're going to look at anything, there is a word for that, and it gets to the cause of everything. Now, that word is called speculation, and it kind of makes it actually makes sense in not only gaming context, but it also makes sense anywhere else. When you sit here and explain that a company is speculating, on what is gonna survive I think you get closer to what exactly is going on in the market so let's let's look at it think about world world of Warcraft Blizzard took a risk especially coming from Warcraft 3 what was the risk that they took they went into an MMO field that was already saturated and dominated by 
Asheron's Call, um, Eve's Online hadn't been made yet, EverQuest, and it was very, very successful compared to, you know, anything from Sony Online and all of these other games that were doing pretty well. But when you look at it, World of Warcraft was a speculation. It was a very polished game. The graphics were top notch for the time. And on top of that, they put it at a price that was a lot lower than any other subscription fee at the time, which was $15. And every time that they put out an expansion pack, it's a speculation, but that speculation is essentially a gamble and it's a safe bet. So when we look at it as if all of these people are gambling, we kind of can see a little bit closer to what is going on in the marketplace. What is going on with all of these companies that sit here and speculate on what is going to do well, what is not going to do well, for whatever reason. Another example, let's go back to Capcom. They put out, or the workers actually worked on, Street Fighter 2. Now there was supposed to be a Final Fight 2010 and all of this other stuff, but what some of the workers said was, I don't want to work on Final Fantasy, or Final Fight. So when they worked on the game, they worked on it, on the Street Fighter 2 that we've known and loved. Um, Kenji, Kenji and Fune actually worked on the profile pictures of Street Fighter at, coming out of college along with Mega Man. That was another speculation. This is not the only type of speculations that go on. Another speculation is Final Fantasy. Each one is a speculation on the future to try to gamble and make sure that you get more profits than returns. And when Sakaguchi was in charge, there was a certain speculation. That speculation went from Final Fantasy Spirits Within, which basically tanked for them, to recreating Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, making the price as high as it is, considering the market, all of these other things. And they try to control as much as they can of what the market is. So when you sit here and talk about Final Fantasy 10 or Final Fantasy 7 remaking those video games, these are speculations. When you look at these speculations, Square considers them and then decides if they want to make that gamble or make that bet. I mean, for all intents and purposes, when I talk about copyright control and everything else, that is a way to sit here and ensure the bet. It's a double down on them controlling a product. And that's how you have to kind of look at these things. When you talk about saturation, it is an effect. When you talk about speculation, it is the cause. It is the cause for all of these companies to sit here and try to make gambles on the games that they want to play. This works for EA, this works for Activision, this works for anybody who wants to consider any form of economic uh, viewpoint into what is going on in the gaming industry. That's all I got to say for now. Hopefully you all found this enjoyable. If not, I might be able to do some more compares and contrasts so you all can sit here and be informed in the future. Take care and see you next time.